everything on me was found inside the stomachs of sea turtles. So sad. And that's why I've decided to invent a miracle that will cure the world. In this video, I'm going to set myself rather a hard challenge. I'm going to try and play Stellaris only using the environmentally protective Ranger jobs. That means we won't be able to use any other jobs to produce any of our resources. No research, no alloys, no minerals. It is going to be rather a hard challenge, but I hopefully will be able to unite the galaxy behind my environmentalist ideals, or at least convince them that they're very, very wrong at the point of a laser rifle, and then take on the crisis. I'm not sure this is going to be possible. I think my economy might crash right from the very start. We are going to be throwing in a bit of roleplay, of course, with this challenge run to make it just that little bit more interesting and tell, hopefully, quite a fun story. Without any further ado, let me introduce you to the Empire I'm going to be playing with today. Greenpeace are the Empire we're going to use today to take on this Ranger-only challenge. That of course means we have to take the Civic Environmentalist. Now, Environmentalists has had a little bit of a change as of 3.9. We can construct Ranger Lodges on our planets which add Ranger jobs. These produce unity for every naturally occurring tile blocker present. The Ranger Lodges cause all of our naturally occurring tile blockers to produce unity, so we're going to want to keep them around. On top of that, Rangers produce society research and amenities, which is nice, but they'll also generate extra energy, food, or minerals, depending on which natural blockers are present. We also get the Ranger Lodge and a reduction to pop consumer goods upkeep. This is going to be the only way of generating any energy, food, or minerals from our jobs. We're not going to have any other jobs producing those resources, which is going to be possibly a bit of a challenge. We're going to go with Vaults of Knowledge to increase our leader start level. I'm hoping to roll a few resource producing traits, otherwise our economy will crash right at the start of the game because I'll be demolishing all of our other districts and buildings. All of our mining districts, food districts, all of our energy districts, industrial districts, all of those will be gone right away at the start because we are environmentalists and we're trying to preserve the nature. Our activists are an invasive species, meaning they'll get extra habitability and pop growth for each negative trait. I've gone with unruly, weak, and quarrelsome because they really won't matter that much, granting us 15% habitability and pop growth speed on every pop. I can combine this with budding because budding is a botanical trait, meaning we'll get additional pop assembly based on how many activists are on the planet. Yes, they pop out of holes in the ground. To make sure that our pops actually have something to do while there's all this unemployment around, of course they'll be thinking up grand new ways of saving the environment, but we will be allowing them to live under utopian living standards which will grant some research and unity production, two of each, at the cost of one consumer good. So it's, uh, it's a trade that I have to make because there's otherwise no way of producing any resources from any of our pops and I do need to have some resources. You should not be lulled into a false sense of security by the name Greenpeace. They are of course fanatic militarists, granting us extra fire rate and access to the no retreat war doctrine. Somehow at the start of the game, Greenpeace has conned, I, I mean, uh, uh, they've convinced two other neighboring empires to join with us in a federation that I'll be calling Greenpeace International. There's of course going to be quite a bit of roleplay during this playthrough, but it is first and foremost a challenge playthrough, and these are the settings I'm going to be using for this challenge run if you'd like to play along at home. Having finally overthrown the shackles of the old ways, the Greenpeace movement have a couple of changes to make to Canada. We have people working dirty metallurgist jobs, terrible for the environment, artisan jobs as well. It's simply diabolical. Researchers propelling ahead evil ways of, well, all researchers, I have to assume, along with miners stripping the land of its precious resources and technicians and the worst of all, the clerks, the paper pushers. So to make this all accurate, we're just going to go ahead and yes, we'll just demolish everything. There's all the industrial districts are gone, this research lab, that's verboten, a commercial zone, naughty naughty, administrative offices, I don't think so, leaving us with a lovely beautiful ranger lodge, the vault of knowledge, which is just a vault, that's fine, the capitol building, city districts to live in, and of 
course some agriculture districts because we should be going back to the land. These are only, I must remind you though, non-GMO farmers. They just work their little jobs and they love it. It's going to be fine. Oh, and we should, yeah, unemploy those clerks. I can't imagine this having any economic repercussions for our great and glorious nation. So the damage there isn't quite as bad as I would have thought. We're only at minus two consumer goods, plus four alloys, yada, yada, yada. But we're not done there. We're currently making four unity. We do want to make more unity than that. So we're going to do what, of course, the lovely people of Greenpeace know is in their hearts the right thing to do. And we'll make sure all activists are on the utopian abundance living standard. No one is working, everyone has everything, and this won't cause a single issue for our great and glorious nation. We also get to level up our leader traits, but I think we'll grab some resource traits. Don't mind if I do. We are not alone in this dark universe either. We have spread, you could say, infected other civilizations with our fanatic Greenpeace ideas, and they are now members of Greenpeace International. The foundation of beauty, catalytic processing, lovely folks, yes, yes, xenophilic, pacifist, there's some slight authoritarian thing, we won't worry about that. And the compact of Ansulum, really lovely people, all of them, absolutely all of them. Switching over to this style of economy means we're now making 150 research per month, that's pretty good, about 30 unity, that's pretty good as well, but we do have something of a consumer goods crisis, ouch. But ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing to worry about. Absolutely not a single thing that could be a problem here. We just need to ride out this economic storm, increase our farming capabilities just a little bit because of course more farmers is always a good thing. We'll be going out first off and improving a lot of our people with aptitude training so they can be better leaders of tomorrow. Hopefully that will fix everything with our economy. And after three arduous years, we finally balance the books and everything looks good. All is well in the noble state of Greenpeace. And of course, we need more good soldiers to defend the Greenpeace ideal, so we'll put down a few strongholds just here or there. And those soldiers need to remember they are first and foremost Greenpeace, and supremacy just seems like the way to go here to get all of that sorted out. No ulterior motives, we're not the baddies, everything's fine. We've been looking for our first world to live on outside of our home and there were just so many good choices that we decided to go with this one here, a Luna 3. It's beautiful, Tundra World. Apparently that's got a problem for our habitability, but we don't mind as an invasive species, Greenpeace can thrive anywhere. Yeah, let's expand the council just a little bit ahead of the plan time and then condition our leaders to be even better than they could possibly already be. We've met our first aliens, the Hathrada hegemony. Slaving despots, fanatic xenophobes, yeah, I think we're going to greet them properly in the fields of battle. And by battle, I mean subjugation. We'll take their stuff. Yeah, I think taking their stuff would be an excellent idea. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, I'll claim this and this. Don't mind if I do. We'll bring our military forwards, kindly provided by our allies. They've been spending a lot of time and money on these ships. We vote yes. Everyone else votes yes. Greenpeace is adding a new member. Uh, the membership committee has gone out to welcome them. Here they come. Well, this definitely could have gone better. They've jumped into the system too. So we have the Starbase to contend with as well. I'm hopeful though. I'm hopeful Greenpeace can see... Yes, we've seen them off. Excellent. We have lost one ship. Two. Three. But we are not losing the war. Of course, on this planet, we'll throw down a Ranger Lodge. Our first colony needs one of those. And I suppose a little city district for people to live. Otherwise, we won't be doing anything else. Well, this definitely a freighter class outpost is uh, is going to be going down. Even if they fly in, they cannot prevent the slaughter. Help, the helpful laughter that's going to come. Excellent. Some more primitives enlightened to our peace-loving Greenpeace ways. Ah, victory. The planet of hell tells us of the dangers that face any civilization that does not follow the ways of Greenpeace. We cannot even build a ranger lodge here to protect the natural environment because there is no natural environment left. It's disgusting. On the other hand, the rangers working tirelessly on Iltar's bulwark are making so many resources. They're making about six at the cost of three. It's a great trade that definitely works for all involved. We've met Zazira Katun. Now, Zazira is great. Why is Zazira great? Zazira is a driven educator, meaning that all of our pops can generate more research as they sit around doing nothing except discussing the merits of their civilization. It is glorious, idyllic. 
and I would definitely not say hedonistic. Yep, let's get them straight in. We'll swap Tetran out to Keeper of the Vault. All of this is looking rather good then. We're going to recruit Dorakina, not because she's an entrepreneur and therefore generates extra consumer goods for us and we're struggling for those. No, no, no. It's, it's actually because she's such a great roamer and we, we really believe that this previous farmer would be great in our administration. And now we'll just rush through this leadership conditioning. Nothing to see here. No worries. Well, Dorakina's just leveled up and is now producing even more consumer goods. What a darn shame. Meanwhile, in the northern part of our great, glorious uh, freedom sphere, we're going to create a new vassal. Uh, we've met someone else by doing that. That's interesting. That's really interesting. We've met two people. I'm thinking uh, Prospectoria. We will, of course, modify the contract to make everything just really good for them. Brilliant. Yeah, what's really interesting about all of that is that it now means we've got two vassals with no right to vote on our federation. Our federation has five members. And that means if I've done my maths correctly, we now have the deciding vote amongst the people of our federation. Oof, that's a bit of a shame. Now, we do have other free members in the federation, but unfortunately, they're just not Greenpeace enough. So yeah, the compact, unfortunately, they are going to have to leave briefly. Yeah, we'll we'll bring them back in with a new a new legal agreement. It's absolutely not a problem. I, I wouldn't even worry about it. Yes, there they come. Back in they come. Excellent. They are now in the Federation. Oh, that does mean I control four of the five votes at this point. Oh, that's a bit awkward. It looks like up in the Galactic North, the citizens regime of Flasvec, well, they've destroyed their capital. Look, it's a relic world. Their homeworld is demolished. It's despicable and disgusting. They're also xenophobes. Can't be abiding by that. So, of course... We need to help them. Yeah, yeah, unanimous vote for the war declaration. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's go and welcome our newest members. Isn't this exciting? They clearly need some, some aid on their world. So, right, we're going to have to spread the love a little bit and pop down aid agencies everywhere that we can because we are all about helping others. And we're just so grateful that we have this opportunity to help everyone. Look at our helpful lasers, helpfully helping the beautiful greens of Greenpeace International spread out further into this great and glorious galaxy. A bright future for you and uh, and everyone else at home, probably. They really should surrender that. They've only got themselves to blame here. You know what? Let's pop down a Ranger Lodge on the Great Promise. Yes, once our erstwhile allies now, of course, they've fallen on hard times and we're stepping in to help out where we can. Uh, we're having a bit of an issue somehow. We, and we, I, I don't understand really. We're not doing any mining anywhere. And yet we've got this overflowing glut of minerals. I hate it as much as the next activist, I must admit, but we might as well do something with them, I suppose. But luckily, even through all of these hardships, we know deep in our hearts, as do our subjects, that we share a common destiny in preserving this great galaxy. Unfortunately, we're actually having to go down to the surface of some of these worlds to convince the citizens regime of Flazzy Vec that yes, we are nice people. Ah, and there we have it. Flazzy Vec have completely agreed that yes, in fact, we were right and they were unfortunately wrong. Uh, I guess that means the Foundation of Beauty, yeah, they need a renegotiation as well. We'll just, yeah, we vote it happens and then maybe we just have to go the regular way. That might be all there is to it. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? We should probably go out and grab, uh, well, we could get on yielding, but first I think we'll finish off diplomacy. And our great leader, the Lord of Peace, Timofona herself, she's issued a military build-up edict. So I, I guess we're just going to have to do that for a little while. At this point, our eyes must turn eastwards the poppy trade ring. Clearly, no mega corporation can have the true fundamental ideals of the Greenpeace movement at heart, and that's why we have to go and leaflet them. We're going to send in all the leaflets, and uh, we'll just take a vote on it at Greenpeace International. And would you look at that? Unanimous support once again for the movement. It's just so good that we all work together. I think the poppy trade ring might be having a bit of a bad time, actually. We probably shouldn't have chosen now as they are currently at the mercy of a raiding pirate fleet as well which is going to go in and soften them up before we arrive in order to deal with the myriad number of smaller organizations that have now come in and joined greenpeace international we're happy to have you all of course we are setting up a diplomatic core so that we can better interact and serve your needs 
And now our circles will circle the circles of Poppy's circles. And one day we'll know that Poppy was wrong here and we were right. Greenpeace is the only way. And that time is right now. Huzzah! Obviously, Greenpeace needs to champion the ecological protections of every single planet in the galaxy. That's why we're pushing it to the top of the agenda next. We're making about 500 Unity and almost a thousand Science Year 50 here with predominantly unemployed people, but then Rangers. We've got all of these lovely Rangers from the Ranger Lodge. We're environmentalists, baby. It looks like there's been a power outage on Canada, a color out of space. We've had a worldwide blackout, meaning for most people, well, in fact, for everybody, actually, this doesn't do anything, I don't think. Yes, we're, our unemployed is still making their unemployment benefit, so I, I probably should do something about it. The global power outage unironically doesn't affect us because we're space hippies who don't have any power. I, this couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> you couldn't make this stuff up. Well, there's some sort of creature. Minus 60% energy from trade, minus 60% monthly energy credits. I mean, sure. I don't actually think that's going to do anything. Let's check. Oh, no, it did do some stuff. Oh, okay. Very beautiful, though. I love this event. Oh, it's gone blue. We have a code blue, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, we will try to attune our minds and push the Greenpeace adverts into everyone's brains everywhere at all times. Don't worry, it'll be fine. The Great Awakening has just happened now. Every activist can beam their thoughts directly into the brains of those around them and also read their thoughts and just generally make sure that everyone understands how great Greenpeace is. What a utopian world we get to live in. I really want to bring on board the Ironmongers, but it just seems like they need a little more convincing. For that reason, we're going to take management of a couple of systems currently in their space, uh, specifically here, Scoundrels Jetty, which uh, really needs our help. Metallurgists and robots? Disgusting. We'll just go for a quick little uh, rearrangement. We'll have some great diplomacy, and of course, as usual, we have unanimous support for the war. Brilliant. Well, the Eater of Worlds would like us to form a little covenant with them. I'm sure that couldn't possibly go wrong. As always, I, I love uh, the Eater and his eating ways. And if you're enjoying this video, please, likes for the Light Throne. I think we can repel these invaders here as well. Yeah, here our fleets come in, annihilating them. Well, we are past the mid game now, only 25 years before the crisis could arrive. Everything's not going that badly. I mean, we're a little low on alloys, but research wise, we're doing all right. Let's send our forces in, see if we can finally knock out these uh, interlopers. The big star base here, we've got uh, hopefully enough helpful missiles. Good. Everybody's helping. Excellent. Minimal loss of life. And throughout all of this, we're maintaining friendly relations. I quite know how we're managing it, but somehow we're still happy. And so are they. We've got some great refugees. Brilliant. But now, hopefully, perfect. By taking the territory from them. Sorry, did I say taking territory? By reorganizing and managing the, uh, the, the, the local area, we've proven once and for all that we are really good at doing stuff. That looks like a great deal. Let's see if they accept that deal and join with us. Yes, excellent. Chief Executive Officer Merc, Daughter of Pig, was like, of course, Lord of Peace, Dimophona. We will join Kirak League. Now they, they need help. This is, they, I, I definitely sense help requests there. Right, we'll, uh, we'll take a vote. Interestingly, again, unanimous. All those in favor, carried you unanimously. We should probably propose the Galactic Council at this point, I'm thinking. Yes, Galactic Council would be very, very good to have. Uh, probably should have done that a little bit earlier, to be honest. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Meanwhile, we should probably fight this war that we've started. Yeah, that's a good plan, isn't it? I think the art of politics would be the next best thing to step into here. You know, the Greenpeace fancy themselves part of the political sphere. Goodness gracious me, these folks are not doing so great. But the Eater of Worlds is pretty nice for us. 7% fire rate. Oh, wank work. Now that is a jewel that they are exploiting incorrectly. Are those miners right? We need to do something about this. I don't care how much influence. Wank work shall be ours. Thank you. And we'll increase the size of the fleet to 600. Yes, excellent. Jump in and say hello and wank work. Yes. Hello. 
Ooh, we can put down a Sanctum of the Eater. That sounds fun. Let's do that. And you know what? We haven't put down a Psycor yet, so we'll, we'll also do that. Year 70 doesn't seem too shabby to be going for Mega Engineering, considering we're a race of activists that don't really do anything except complain and then get subsidies. Perfection. Whoever keeps putting my pot on the slave market, I'm deeply upset by it. We need to shut this thing down. Yes, ban organic slave trading. It's terrible. No one should be allowed to do it. We'll soon be there. The Pyrrhic League has mostly been uh, told what it needs to do. It will figure that out in the end, at which point we'll assume overall control of certain aspects. Ah, there we are, a Galactic Council. Now we can start getting things done. Next step. Nominate Greenpeace as the custodians of the galaxy. There goes the capital. I think it's time to send an offer of peace because no one wants things to be wrong. Of course, there are some issues with this planet. We'll have to fix those issues before we can do anything else. Downgrading and demolishing abominations. But am I staying true to my environmentalist ways? Am I actually succeeding at this challenge? Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. The year is 2275. Reports coming into the Lord of Peace tells us that we may be facing a crisis imminently. There are still a few empires out there that have not adopted the Greenpeace international message. We can rectify the profits of Nerd. They'll sign an agreement pretty much straight away, which brings them nicely into our sphere. The only issues now are the two independent nations, the Zendikari and the Mandate of Muria, who are fighting it out in a pointless war. And then, of course, the Grand Suth Empire that have one value vassal, the hierarchy of the Laturia Prime. It might actually be better though if we leave them to it and don't bother to enlighten them. Though any minute now, the tireless workers of Greenpeace Multinational will be banning organic slave trade, preventing our ability to buy any of our own people from any slavers that might exist out there. The life of an activist is one of idyllic bloom. Most of the people in our empire simply while away their days in utopian abundance, loving every minute, and of course thinking up new ways to save this galaxy and preserve the unique peoples and cultures within it. There are of course no slaves out there anymore, no one providing the basic resources and consumer goods or Nike trainers to these first world activists. Yes, no allegories to be drawn here whatsoever, don't even try. The great leader is dead, her seat lies empty, but do not fear, the death of an activist is not as final as it may appear. Even if the main stem has begun to deteriorate, the roots can be reinvigorated. After soaking in a special hormone solution, Timphona's remains are carefully buried in the soil of Mondak's retreat. The burial site is tended by brood members who patiently await for younglings to sprout on the surface, starting the cycle anew. After the Zendikari have finished their war, let's bring them into the fold with a nice well-negotiated contract. The Grand Suth Empire has unfortunately awoken a sleeper. The great Khan Flurio Dalton is on the warpath. This is not going to be good for them at all. We should probably move some fleets up there and think about doing something. Ah, the Horde has come around the other way and they're presenting a bit of a problem for us. I suppose we could send in the Federation fleet. Yeah, let's do it. Meanwhile, in the Galactic Senate, uh, well, this, I would say, is probably a crisis. And in times of crisis, emergency powers could probably go to the strongest member of this community, which, at least in ethics and morality, is clearly Greenpeace. And would you look at that? Unanimous support from the Senate. Misa propose that the Senate give immediately emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor. I think we might just have brought enough ships. Yes, that maybe, maybe a few too many. Let's see. Uh, ooh, that's, yeah, that's one knocked out Khan, I believe. Well, there's the great Khan. I think we'll be able to track him down and uh, dispose of him. Ah, he retreated. Darn it. Right, let's, uh, I guess we could do a cleanup operation. Yep, this is cleanup for sure. Oh, great Khan detected. Time to go and help him out. No, don't snipe the kill. Oh, don't snipe the kill. Damn it. Come on. We're 20 days away. No, no, it's not fair. Oh, I suppose at this point, there's only one reasonable thing to be done. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll vassalize these folks. Greenpeace International unanimously votes yes again. And we are at war, ladies and gentlemen. Let's send the Fed fleet through to show them we really do mean business and annihilate their two largest fleets in a single stroke. Oh, yes. Our ships blot out the stars. 
And now we're just stacking stupid ship build cost reductions again. Psionic Supremacy maxed with military buildup gives us a base of minus 30%. Got another 10, 15 on the council. I could probably make it higher, can't I? Unfortunately, the Pirak here, they're definitely not pulling their weight in this war, so we're going to renegotiate the terms of the agreement. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. With the loss of Hantaka, I'm pretty sure that any more resistance to our grand ideology will be gone, along with autonomy of the Grand Suf Empire. Nothing to worry about here, though absolutely no questions to be asked. Oh, and that term limit? Yeah, we decided to make it permanent just so we can uh, collect more data. Perfect. That just leaves these fellows really, I think, who are outside our great network. Let's bring them in. Oh, and the Empire of Mang. How could I forget the Empire of Mang? Why oh, recently liberated? Oh, I see. Ugh, I mean, it'd be a shame if somebody were to vassalize them. Oh, well, here we go. And this should now usher in a safer, more secure galaxy. A Greenpeace galaxy. There's, there's a minor border skirmish going on here, but once that has been resolved, oh boy, the amount of peace we'll be having is going to be astronomical. Greenpeace are going to give it, mm, let's see, I think another, another seven years or so. And if no crisis shows up on time, well, I think we can at that point declare the galaxy has been fixed. Everything is great. No questions need to be asked. And you know what? Nothing says that Greenpeace has won their mission, like bringing in the Habnite Unified Worlds, a series of, I don't know how to put it, other than um, the greatest activists this galaxy has ever seen. We have uh, definitely got mission accomplished here because they are more than happy to recognize international supremacy of Greenpeace United. And with that, I think the galaxy is now basically united. We probably need to get the GDF fleet up and running, so let's do that, of course, just in case this crisis does actually materialize. Not that it's real. Ironically, because the galaxy don't have any free diplomatic weight anymore, no one's voting for anything without our say-so. Yes, we have achieved a perfect democracy where everyone votes exactly the way that Greenpeace tells them to. Well, that five-year mark has come and passed, but I'm still hungry. Let's uh, see if we can get the crisis to show up and actually bloody our noses a bit. And we're pushing for something else in the community, which I'm sure everyone is going to love unanimously. So this is how Liberty dies. With thunderous applause. Apparently we're in breach of the Military Readiness Act, so uh, we're going to put in constitutional immunity for Greenpeace. Of course, we need that in order to manage everyone's things better. It's not a dystopia, it is a utopia, ladies and gentlemen. Do not be confused. I know they sound very similar. I am kind of missing out on dark matter tech. You know what? Let's do something about that. I'm just going to borrow the Alpha Refuge just for a few minutes. We'll just send in the GDF for this little peacekeeping initiative. We are at a juicy 1 million fleet power, so I, I feel a bit ridiculous not using it. And we're just going to borrow th these worlds uh, j just a little bit. I mean, they're not really using them as far as I know. Oh, the galaxy unanimously votes these robots are evil. Let's see what 1 million fleet power can do against the fallen empire. All right, here we go. We've engaged. That's some initial shots. They're still alive and they're firing. They're killing no. Oh, yes, we lost. We lost a Titan. A Titan and a battleship. Two battleships. Goodness gracious. We, we lost, yeah, we lost three ships. And the rest of the Fed can deal with this problem. We're going to go home. Having plus 40% weapons damage on the GDF fleet is a bit ludicrous. I mean, we're getting extra energy weapon damage here of over 100%, extra kinetic weapon damage here of over 100% plus 100% ship fire rate. Ugh. Ah, another enemy dealt with. Excellent, excellent. Let's just make sure... Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. None of these jobs. How despicable. Let's get rid of all of those. Can we put down a nature preserve on a ring world? I think the answer is no, but it would make sense a little bit. The, the, the natural ring world environment does need to be preserved. That's the Greenpeace mission, really. Well, it's 2330. We've got a combined fleet here of uh, 3 million, ignoring our other bonuses we will be getting against the crisis, which of course will be coming from Defender of the Galaxy plus 50%, the Galactic Threats Committee for another 20, and then of course, whenever we set the focus when they arrive, giving us basically plus 100% damage against all those crisis factions. But yes, at this point, given how late the crisis is, I think it would be like beating a dead horse. So 
I'm gonna say mission accomplished. Ladies and gentlemen, Greenpeace has saved the galaxy. Every world is now free to live out their own destiny. For instance, hell, it's lovely this time of year. Darmug's frontier, uh, it's preserved. Yes, ignore the trout eaten population part. Lovely planet. We should go there on a holiday. It's beautiful. Definitely not on the backs of any slaves because they're happy. They're happy they're not slaves. That's the rule that I've just made up. Uh, and, and, and yeah, it's all going really well. If you enjoyed this video and you'd actually like to see me take on a crisis, a 25 times crisis with a little bit of help, click the video on screen now.